6.30 on a Sunday night in Brentwood, California. Private investigator John Nazarian is timing the drive from Nicole Brown Simpson's condominium to O.J. Simpson's house. Got a car on the road. Here we go, we're making the right. O.J.'s defense lawyers claimed it was not possible for him to have committed the crimes and returned to his house in 20 minutes time. Just under four minutes. But let's back up a bit. The prosecutors asserted that the murders took place around 10.15 p.m., when Nicole's dog was heard crying by nearby neighbors. That would have allowed O.J. 40 minutes to return home and clean up before 10.55 p.m., when he called a waiting limo driver by intercom from inside his house. The defense said the murders didn't happen until 10.30 or 10.35, when another neighbor heard what sounded like a loud argument outside Nicole's condo. That would have left OJ only 20 minutes to commit the murders and get back to his house. So if the drive could have been done in four minutes, that leaves about 15 minutes for the murders. Before the murders, O.J. had played the part of a Navy SEAL in a television drama that was filmed but never transmitted. In a sworn deposition, Simpson denied having been given special training in knife fighting for the part. But police and the media speculated that O.J. may have been taught basic attack and survival skills. In the virtual crime scene, Navy SEAL Cade Courtley demonstrates how long it would take for a trained killer to commit two murders. The attacker comes to position. Ron approaches, proceeds forward a little bit further, and here's something. Ron is engaged. Quick blow to the left, back across, pushes him out of the way, proceeds on to Nicole. The same. Now, something like that, done again at quarter speed, it only took about 15 seconds. So somebody going through there, like a freight train, is gonna, go, is gonna be done with this in about eight seconds. Good. And it's done, just like that. You may look pretty simple with one person. You're gonna show us how we work with two people. Yeah, now again, uh, this is tight quarters, but you have two people who are working in unison uh, you can flow through this thing in half the time. And again, we'll do it at quarter speed, but uh, we're in here, Jeff's right on my quarter. I address the immediate threat. Jeff flows right by. And it's done like that. I mean, just boom. Okay, John, we'll do full speed now with two attackers. And this is even faster than the first round. All right. Although the defense suggested that the struggle between the assailants, or assailant, and Ronald Goldman might have taken as long as 10 minutes, the killings could have happened in seconds. But even if 10 minutes are allowed, it still would have been possible for OJ to have committed the crimes and returned home in time to speak to his limo driver at 10.55. So this avenue of inquiry remains inconclusive. But what about OJ's cut finger? and the infamous bloody gloves. Simpson flew to Chicago the same night as the murders. Police noticed a cut on the middle finger of his left after hearing of Nicole's death, had broken a glass in his Chicago hotel room and cut his finger. Detective Tom Lang was one of the two lead police investigators on the Simpson case. Well, I come to find out that he goes down to the desk and he made a big stink about, I want a bandage, I cut my hand as if to build in an alibi with three or four people there who we ultimately interviewed. The Los Angeles detectives sensed that the cut and where it had occurred might be important to the case. This led to us actually sending the Chicago Police Department to his hotel room in a big hurry, and they went in and they actually found glass in the sink that appeared to be some blood on the glass. So we were very concerned, maybe this is his alibi or had he cut himself at the crime scene. 
In the course of doing something like this, what's the chances of someone getting hurt, the attacker? Well, there are a couple things. Now, you've been in a fight before, and you know you're going to ding up your knuckles. Uh, now, people just beginning with knives, um, there's always this transition. You, you maintain the hand out there to maintain a barrier, so to speak. And the knife comes in, the guard comes back to guard the face, and then goes back there. That kind of a transition could create a cut. Another thing is, you, right now you're wearing a watch, you're wearing glasses, something like that. You bring your hand up with a watch to defend, a scrape there, maybe a tooth, your glasses, multiple ways of, of scarring or cutting up that offhand. So when did OJ cut his finger? And if during a struggle at Nicole's house, why didn't the left glove found at the crime scene have a corresponding cut in it? There's a sequence to what went down at the crime scene, and I believe part of that sequence is that O.J., after having incapacitated Nicole, interacted with Ron Goldman. And I think at a certain point in time, Ron went to the non-threatening hand, the left hand where the glove was, and that the glove came off early in Ron's brief struggle against O.J., and the glove went down sans any cuts to it, and that during the struggle itself, OJ cut not only his middle finger on his hand, but there were cuts to the adjacent two fingers as well. And whilst on the subject of gloves, what possible explanation could there be for the bloody right glove to have ended up at OJ's house on Rockingham Avenue? And not only at his house, but on the path behind his house. Defense lawyer Johnny Cochran said the glove was planted there by the Los Angeles police, but that has never been proved. Police found drops of OJ's blood between his car, the famous white Bronco, and his house. John Nazarian asked prosecutor Bill Hodgman if any scenario other than a setup by police could explain why the glove had ended up behind the house. I believe Simpson went down the driveway, went down the side of the house on the property that's the immediate south of Rockingham. Simpson went over the fence. In doing so, inadvertently, he dropped the right-hand bloody glove. I think the, the blood drops on the driveway occurred when Simpson was going out to the Bronco. Why does he make that jaunt along the back where he eventually bumps in the air conditioner and drops the glove? Why didn't he have everything in the house Take anything off, okay. put it in the bag, okay. and off to the airport he goes. Forget, he's in a hurry. He shows up for the limo driver's seat. Right, right. He's, he's got to do something about that. He is in a hurry. That's why he loses the glove. 